G'day. I guess you're here to find out where the F1 drivers live. Well, a good number of them live in Monaco. Do you know them? Well, I'll run through those in just a moment. First up, Lewis Hamilton. Does he live in Monaco? Yes. Well, for some of the year anyway, not all of the year, because obviously they travel quite a bit. He has a multi-million dollar home in Monaco, plus homes all around the world. So what is the attraction to live in Monaco? Yeah, low tax, everyone knows that. Straight up, there's no personal income tax. So if you're earning $30 million a year as an F1 driver, the government of Monaco takes none of that. Now, if you live in England or in France or in most Western countries, the government is going to be taking a significant proportion, certainly 40% or more on the majority of your income. So how big is Monaco? Well, it's just two square kilometres. It has the world's shortest coastline, 3.8 kilometres, and the width of the country ranges from a measly 350 metres to a whopping 1.7 kilometres. It's a very small place. And did you know that if you own a home in Monaco, you can't rent it out as an Airbnb? Why? The government doesn't want that. So when I travel to Monaco to go to the race and I book an Airbnb, I have to book just outside of Monaco uh, in Beausoleil, typically, and the walk might be less than a kilometre, but it's technically in France. The current F1 World Drivers' Champion, Max Verstappen, he lives in Monaco, owns an apartment there worth more than 13 million euros, but trust me, that does not get you a huge apartment in Monaco. Have a look at this. I did some research. This particular apartment, you'll pay 2.3 million US dollars, which is about 2.1 million euros. And that's for a studio apartment with a measly 35 square meters. Of course, if you've got a bit more in your pocket, you could probably get online and buy this one. This is three bedrooms, three bathrooms, 13 point what? 5 million euros and it's 188 square metres. Your money doesn't go very far in Monaco. Charles Leclerc next, he lives in Monaco. In fact, he is the only F1 driver that was born and raised in the Principality. And if you're new to the sport, you'll notice that uh, Charles number 16 on his helmet features the colour of the Monaco flag, red and white. Next up, Lando Norris. Yes, another driver to live in Monaco. Moved there a couple of years ago now. He's originally from Britain, of course. And what are the savings in tax? when you move from Britain to Monaco. Well, here's the British tax rates. And as you can see, they're quite high when you get to the top end. So suddenly you go from paying that amount of tax to zero in Monaco. That is the very real temptation, moving to a place like Monaco. And there's the other side of things too, where you get to socialize with your F1 mates because you all live in this very small area. On the Thursday of the 2023 Monaco Grand Prix, I went into pit lane, which is rather unusual in Monaco because it's actually curved. It's the only pit lane that we have in a curve. And I started at one end of the paddock and took a shot every 10 meters or so until I'd done the whole paddock. Then these 22 images were painstakingly stitched together to produce this totally unique elevated panorama. And I'm now offering these as a limited edition, large scale canvas print. There are only 10 and each is hand numbered and hand signed. I have no doubt this would look spectacular in your home or office once you've had it framed. Apart from there being no income tax levied on people in Monaco, there is also no wealth tax, no local tax, no property tax, and no capital gains tax on individuals. So if you buy your apartment for 13 million euros and you sell it for 20, the whole profit goes into your pocket without any government taking a share. Valtteri Bottas is from Finland. He has a lake house in Finland, but also is registered to live in Monaco and does spend a number of days a year there, uh, as he does in Australia, because his girlfriend is Australian, quite likes it, tended to spend a fair bit of time last summer in the southern states of Australia. I was going to say something about that. Hello. Very good. Um, now, at the moment, I'm recording a video, but go ahead, you're on the video. It's a scammer. She's got all shy. Oh, she hung up. <laughs> Scammers. So can anyone just go and live in Monaco? No. Uh, no, you need to be quite wealthy. You have to have a half a million euros that you're happy to put into an account and leave there. Although if you want to start a company at a later date, you can use some or all of those funds for that. So in general, uh, it's the very wealthy that live in Monaco, and some 33% 
of the 36,000 or so residents of Monaco are millionaires. I would have thought more than that. The Monaco government is indeed acutely aware that they have a lot of high profile and very wealthy people living in their country. And because of that, the government requires written permission for all professional photography, which minimizes the paparazzi pestering their millionaires. Oh, and another interesting thing about Monaco is they're quite uh, overbearing when it comes to video. I'll tell you, a couple of times I've been shooting simple stuff around the casino, just me talking about the area, and boy, the police come over and um, say, no, you can't video there. I'd already videoed, but anyway, I had to stop videoing. Mm, I don't know why they're so worried about that, but it is definitely a thing. German driver Nico Hulkenberg lives in Monaco with his wife, Egle, and daughter, Noemi, and dog, Zeus. They live in an apartment there, have done for a number of years, and they're not too far from Daniel Ricardo, Australian driver, He's had an apartment in Monaco for a number of years now. He also has quite a magnificent and sprawling mansion in Los Angeles and a farm not an hour's drive from where I'm sitting right now here in Lancel in Western Australia. And the eighth and final driver that calls Monaco their home is Alex Albon. So there you have eight drivers that all live in Monaco. Let's go to Logan Sargent. He bases himself in England, in London to be exact, along with another driver, Oscar Piastri. He and his trainer Kim Keedle live in London and Oscar even goes out with a young English woman in Lily's Nyma. Oh, and I should not forget Chinese driver Zhou Guan Yu, who lives in London as well. Next up, Mexican driver Sergio Perez, who lives in Guadalajara. Well, not all year, because during the European season, he resides in Madrid to be closer to those European races and the factory. Let's move on to Fernando Alonso. He lives in Switzerland. So is there a tax advantage for Fernando living in Switzerland as opposed to his home country of Spain? Yes, there is. Look at the tax rates for income earned in Switzerland. On a multi-million dollar salary, the likes of which these drivers earn, the savings are quite amazing. Did you post anything on YouTube community yesterday? D, it says. I didn't do that. <laughs> the comments... Yuki Tsunoda, does he live in Switzerland? Negative, he is living in Italy, so he can be close to the Alpha Tauri factory. When it comes to pros and cons of Monaco, one of the big pros is the fact that you can get to Nice Airport via helicopter in just a few minutes. Yeah, it's gonna cost you a few dollars, but if you're living in Monaco, you're not worried about the money, you're probably worried about the time. And I know that Max Verstappen from time to time will take a helicopter to Nice Airport to get on his own private jet. Although when we raced in France, it was quicker and easier for him to take his helicopter from Monaco to Le Castellet and drop out the fixed wing flight. The city is also extremely safe, lots of CCTV cameras, and the whole principality is able to operate by virtue of the fact that the French government effectively turns a blind eye. There aren't too many places like Monaco in the world. It is a standalone principality inside another country. It is totally surrounded by France. So if France decided they didn't want the thing to operate, they could easily close it down by, I guess, chopping off a lot of its services. But they do allow it to operate, although, and this is why Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon probably don't live in Monaco, is that French citizens cannot get the 0% tax rate. They would have to pay normal tax in France, although the French government's more than happy to allow foreign citizens to live there and uh, pay no tax. Pierre Gasly does not live in Monaco because there's no financial benefit for him with tax anyway, so he lives in Milan. And his teammate Esteban Ocon, also a Frenchman, lives in Geneva. So he gets a little bit of a tax break living in Switzerland, but he doesn't get the 0% tax rate. Any other drivers live in Switzerland? Yes. One current driver being Lance Stroll and one past driver in Sebastian Vettel. Roman Grosjean used to live in Switzerland too and his trainer at the time, Kim Keedle, used to live over the border, I think in France, and travel backwards and forwards to train him. But now Kim looks after Oscar Piastri and there are two Aussies, both living in London. Kevin Magnuson. I remember getting on a flight once uh, from Dubai to somewhere and Kevin was sitting next to me in, in business class and we chatted for a little bit and I realised then that he was living in Dubai primarily because he felt it was easy to get to all of the races in the calendar from Dubai and it was much nicer to train there. But now of course he lives in Denmark where he resides with his wife and his two children. By my reckoning that leaves us with two drivers, one being George Russell who still lives in London, still pays tax, I gather, and I'll stand corrected on this because I don't know their personal 
financial situation, but I imagine he's still paying English taxes, which are very high, probably about the same as our tax rates here in Australia. And I do remember speaking to one of George's crew at one stage, and we were talking about the move from Williams to Mercedes. And whoever it was was saying, yeah, George used to be able to go out for a coffee when he was driving for Williams. But when he changed to Mercedes and going for a coffee then became near impossible because of the number of fans that would want to interrupt him. And our final driver is Carlos Sainz, a Spanish driver who still lives in Spain, in Madrid. In fact, I was in Madrid earlier this year and I do love the city. And if you're ever there, do the tour of the bullfighting ring, you'll love it. I ranked it as my second most favourite city in the world behind living here in Perth. Or Lancelin. Um, what did I have as number one? I had Tokyo and number three I had Moscow. If you get a chance to go to Monaco I think you'll love it especially just wandering around the harbour and seeing all of that ostentatious wealth floating on the water and if you're going there for a Grand Prix and you want to stay in Monaco have a very deep wallet. It is crazy expensive. Most people tend to stay in nearby towns and train in, which is a, a very economical way of getting to and from the track. And if you do stay, like I do, in an Airbnb in Beausoleil, getting back to your Airbnb on race night, Sunday night, is an absolute nightmare if you've got several camera bags because there are so many stairs, hardly any of the public transport works and you really need to make some plans. Oh yeah, and one thing my son's just pointed out, we wanted to take this main lift which would have saved us hundreds of stairs, but they said, no, any residents can use that. And we said, hang on, we're renting an apartment. Look, we've got a key. No, you have to own the apartment to use that lift. So they're quite precious with that. Anyway, for a number of drawbacks that Monaco does have, it is quite an amazing city to visit, especially during Grand Prix time. If you've enjoyed this video, you have great taste. And please subscribe, like the video and become a member. For all of my digital images, go to ProStarPix.com. For my F1 photo books, merchandise, wall art and signed prints by the likes of Jackie Stewart right here, head to kimillman.com and for my best images live from the track and during the week, you'll find them on Instagram by searching my name at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching, stay passionate. And in eight seconds time, I'll have a sh um, start again. <laughs>